so there's already a ton of videos benchmarking this process with the new Intel 10 900K, the successor to last year's 9900K. And I'm not gonna go crazy with power consumption and all that kind of stuff. I just wanna talk about who this CPU is really for. Like I put this up against my previous 9900K. I compared it to the 3700X and I also included a few tests from my Ryzen 3900X that I have at home. And I think this chip is really tailored toward a specific type of individual. That's the gaming enthusiast who also likes to content create. This year, the biggest deal about the new 10th gen processor is the fact that it can boost slightly higher and you get two extra cores to work with. So if you're doing multi-threaded workflows where it requires extra cores, it can take advantage of it. You will see a slight difference compared to last year. Now this is a very hot chip and it does consume more power than the previous generation. But I think if you're a gaming enthusiast, if you're hardcore into gaming, you don't really care about how much power it's consuming. I think you're more focused on the frames per second. Now my test bench is pretty equal between the 9900K and the 10900K. Both use the same case. They both use the same RAM, the CPU cooler, and of course the GPU, which is an RTX 2080 Ti. The only difference was the CPU obviously and the motherboard. The new 10th gen processors use the Z490 chipset. You can't use your old motherboard from the 9th gen, which is kind of unfortunate because not a lot has changed in terms of functionality. But if you want to buy the 10th gen processor, you have to buy a new motherboard to go with it. Now this chip is tailored towards the hardcore esports gamer, the gaming enthusiast, someone who puts gaming before everything. So power consumption and power draw and all that kind of stuff doesn't make a difference to you. You'd rather shut down the entire neighborhood, steal all their electricity just to squeeze out an extra five FPS. And if you're gaming, professionally or seriously, you're still gaming at 1080p. And the reason being is because a lot of these monitors have high refresh rates all the way up to 300 Hertz and matching those frame rates at 1440p or 4K is still hard, even with a powerful GPU like the RTX 2080 Ti. The only way to get consistent frame rates in newer titles is to lower the resolution down to 1080p. And that's where this chip excels. It doesn't matter if you put it up against the 3700X, the 3900X, or any other gaming CPU, even the 9900K, you'll still squeeze out extra frames per second using the 10900K. Now for the regular casual gamer, even if you're hardcore and you don't take it seriously, but you still love to game, those extra frames might not mean that much of a difference to you. And some of you actually might enjoy gaming at 1440p or 4K. And if you're that individual, there's obviously better chips to choose from, cheaper chips to choose from that will give you good performance without having to pay more. The other camp this chip is good for is the gaming enthusiast who also likes to content create. Imagine if you have one computer, you use it to stream on Twitch, you use it to game, but you also take the time to cut up that footage afterwards in Adobe Premiere. Those two extra cores on this help play a positive role. Yes, this is not the best content creation CPU. If that's like your priority first, then you're better off buying the 3900X or even the 3700X if you wanna save some money. The 12 cores with the 3900X offer better multi-threaded performance than this chip does. But if you want a good balance between gaming and content creation or whatever type of workflow you're in, then this makes a lot more sense. Now, if you're a budget gamer, I still think you're better off going with uh, the brand new i5 that they just announced or grabbing a 3600X, the six core parts in those CPUs are more than enough to game on a more affordable platform. Anyways, you guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think the 10th gen 900K offers a lot of value? I know they've been using the same 14 nanometer platform for the past five to six years, but one thing Intel is good at is really squeezing the life out of it. Yes, it doesn't have the lower wattage of an AMD seven nanometer CPU, but if you're a hardcore gamer, those extra boost clocks do make a difference, especially at 1080p gaming. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.